Okay guys, it's been a week or so since my last update, maybe more. Things got really crazy at my regular job. So what's been going on with the Ford 3600? As you can see, the starter's gone and the injection pumps off of it. Got it turning over great. Injectors are in it. No issues. We were getting fuel down to the return side. In hindsight, I was looking at the wrong end. I thought fuel came in the side of the pump, not the rear. And also didn't know this pump was completely lubed by diesel. So I did some research on it. Did get good fuel coming out the side. Might have been able to actually get the pump to work on the tractor. I think this, this feed line right here it just seemed like it wasn't flowing real good at first for some reason or maybe the back end of the pump i'll bring you over here maybe the back end of the pump was a little stopped up so i went ahead and bought a rebuild kit pulled it off and figure i'll try and rebuild it hopefully the sound of my heater is not too loud i can probably throttle this thing down a little bit anyway big chunks of apple in there from that big apple tree I cut down so it's about 60 degrees in here right now so I think my phone says it's 35 outside it's about 8 o'clock on Sunday I think November 1st so and I went back to the house to get the camera I came out here forgot the camera at first and got started and I did want to show this I've started to get this injection pump apart. I think my problem might have been a clog in this assembly coming down through here. I've already taken this apart and it does seem like it, I put a little fluid in it. It does, did, ugh, does seem like it flowed better. Oh, tongue twister. I promise I haven't started drinking yet. But I also, as I got the top off of it, I found what looks like another issue. I, is the spring was not returning this at all and this excuse me get on my camera there the spring was not returned this is the fuel shut off it was a little bit further forward and it really seemed it's kind of stiff so i'm going to pull that i'm going to pull this back while i've got it apart i'm going to pull this back assembly off reseal it probably pull the front out and reseal it as well put a new seal up here on top like I said, I bought the rebuild kit. Might as well put new seals, freshen it up a little bit while I've got it apart. Probably not going to do a full dismantle. Probably just a partial dismantle. Probably pull that cover there and see what's behind that. I'll set you up here and let you watch. Nothing I'm too worried about. Here, that one moves pretty free. This roller over here is not moving very well. <laughs> and that's one of the aggravations of YouTube. Is the video I did watch on this. Didn't really go into taking any of this stuff apart. That does appear to be a problem though.
Alright, so basically I'm able to hammer this thing back and forth. Let me turn this heater off. Make sure you guys can hear. I'll come over here in a better light. Over on my toolbox. So you've got these rollers here that ride on the camera ring. And basically this tractor has sat so long that they have, this pump mechanism has gotten sticky. That one turns. That one doesn't come back. There it goes. It took it a minute. All right, they seem to be freeing up as I'm working them. This one's a little slow. The idea is that the this little pump provides pressure and will push them out, but if they're stuck in from old fuel sitting in there, they probably won't swing out like they're supposed to. I don't know if you can see, there is, depending on the light, there's a hole up here. And my big hand in the way. I'm trying to do this on a camera backwards. There's a hole up here that the fuel comes into. This pump pushes it down in here and it'll spread these rollers out and they'll ride the cam. And then they'll do the pumping action. That's based on the video I saw. I'm no expert, I haven't taken it apart. But. So my thought is I've got to get that freed up. And it does appear to be somewhat free now. I don't want to put it together and then have to take it back apart. And I'm just tapping on it with the plastic of this little pick. So making sure I'm not gonna damage anything. I don't really want to take this thing apart because I do know that these that this assembly meters the amount of fuel and it's it probably has a special calibration set that I don't know anything about and don't really want to learn either if I don't have to. Okay, that's better. So, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that pump mechanism sliding back and forth as it goes around and around. I'm going down. Alrighty. The way that's machined, that looks like a rubber O-ring, but that's actually steel. We're gonna spray some brake cleaner. In this hole. Flushing that old nasty smelling diesel out.
All right, I'm happy with that. It's a lot better than when I started. Okay guys, as you can see, this pump is pretty well rebuilt. I'm no expert. This is the first injection pump I've ever resealed. I'm not going to call it a rebuild because it's a reseal. And I got sort of stumped midway through because I found a ball bearing laying down in here. <clears throat> and I was trying to re... I had looked at a YouTube video a couple weeks ago on how to redo this or a week or so ago because I got... I was real busy at work. Couldn't get, couldn't get to this little project last week. So Trying to film and get this thing apart just got to be a pain so there's a lot better youtube video if you want to see somebody take this thing apart there's a lot better youtube videos out there than anything i could put up anyways i will let you know what i found wrong with this one and where the ball bearing came from that stumped me because this little inlet here on the side of this pump this is pretty well specific to fords from what i can tell i don't see it on too many other pumps I didn't see a YouTube video on there of even what it was for. Most of these are just a cover. And this is where the ball bearing actually came from. I searched and searched and went back to YouTube last night and searched some more on there to see what I could find. And I just happened to find, where's my pick? I just happened to find, this. if it shows up on the camera, this little black washer was tucked down here in this gasket. And this gasket kind of flares out sort of funny and I got to look in that and this washer isn't round it's got a little V cut in the bottom so I knew then that it probably fit in here and it actually fit semi tight it wasn't real tight so I figured okay ball bearing must have gone in here it acts as a check valve to keep fuel from the filter from flowing into the pump this way and it just lets pump and it's just a, a loose ball. There's no spring. I didn't see any springs in there. Hopefully there's not one, but there could be, you never know. <clears throat> I do, I think the fuel, the head pressure, I think I'll keep the ball shoved up there anyway and having a notch in it, it it's obviously not a problem to have a little bit of leakage. So and hopefully the internal pressure from the pump will always return fuel through this thing the way it should. So that's where the ball bearing goes. You can hear it. I did have to, uh, I put the ball in, put this in. It, it didn't press in very tight, so I could sit here and I could do that and the ball would knock the, the piece back out. So I basically, I don't know if it shows up on the camera or not. I can't tell it in the viewfinder, but I did take a screwdriver and just sort of make four little divots on it to make sure it holds it in. So that was one thing. That's not what caused the pump not to work. The pump was pretty varnished up. This timing advance valve down here, it was completely seized up. I basically had to take it off, turn it on its side. I couldn't get the plunger to come out. So I basically had it on its side, and there's a finger in here that sticks down in a hole in this plunger. I basically put a socket in that hole in the plunger and took a hammer and beat that thing, that beat on the side of the socket to beat that plunger out. Cleaned it up, got the varnish off, and then it slides in, works real good. Put a little oil on it, works great now. It's just, this this thing had sat for a long time and gotten varnished up. Let's see, what else did I find? I don't think I found anything other than the fuel control, the shutoff. It was varnished up pretty bad. It didn't want to turn, the springs didn't want to actuate it right. I think the combination of those two things and and possibly the plungers in this head assembly they were tight too i'll i'll edit out part of the video where i sort of show that show spinning that thing around you can hear those plungers moving around that's probably the only part i'll show out of that previous video 40 minutes of video that is mostly me scratching my head and wondering so again first first pump i think i bought a ten dollar seal kit or $12 seal kit off Amazon. It pretty well had all the seals. I've got plenty of stuff left over because it's it's made to do, I think, anywhere from a three-cylinder to a six-cylinder pump, multi-variations. It seemed like it had all the right, right stuff in it. The only thing I didn't redo is I didn't redo these two here. I probably should have, but 
I got it got late. I got tired. And these actually, these O-rings seem like they're still pretty good and loose. If it does start leaking, I'll just pop the top and redo it. It's not going to be a big deal either way. So that's that. I'll get this thing put back together, get a new seal put on. Comes with a new seal for this as well. Get rid of this old one. Get it put back on the tractor and hopefully have it up and running here in the next couple days. And then after that, the tractor, I'll probably do a video on replacing the blown hose on the skid steer. I've got the hose removed. I've got the hose. I didn't show all that work, but I'll, sh I'll show putting it back together. It's pretty simple. Pretty easy to access. That's, that skid steer is pretty easy to work on. So that'll be the next video. Hope you enjoy.